Hey everyone, thanks for joining our midweek podcast. My name is Andrew and I'm your host and joining me today we have Pastor Scott Kramer who is preaching this week at uh, both campuses. Yes, we are streaming correct. to North uh, this week as we were kicking off a new teaching series, God Is. And joining our conversation today around week one, we have Pastor Dan Sarna, our worship pastor. Guys, thanks for sitting down and taking some time to dive deeper into Sunday's message. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. Yeah, week one of a six-part series called God Is, where mm-hmm. we're exploring six different natures of God. Not, yeah. I mean, we could probably spend a couple of years just mm-hmm. examining the nature of God and and not really even still scratch the surface. Yeah. But we're we're trying to take six weeks and highlight some of the some of the bigger points yeah. of mm-hmm. of you know God's nature. Yeah, and and you know how how that impacts our lives. Um, but it's a lot to do in, in a message, yeah. um, which makes for some, you know, hopefully some great conversation yes. in these podcasts. Uh, but to kick us off today, Scott, how about you just kind of do a, a brief recap of, of where we started in the series yep. and what you were preaching on on Sunday? Yeah. And just to, to add to what Andrew said already, if you're, if you are new to our church um, or you haven't yet seen Sunday's message, I would make sure I would encourage you to make sure that you block some time out to uh, tune in online and go to our watch page and listen to it or watch it because I think it would be helpful to you, um, especially after you listen to this podcast. You'll it'll make more sense. So week one, I I've tried to build this series in a a natural progression way, and I think it'll that'll connect to what we talk about today. To, we might talk about faith and reason and logic and some of the mystery that exists out there uh, when it comes to science and the Bible. But um, I wanted to start with what I think is the most basic place with the fundamental nature of God is that he's the creator, that he He is the only source of life. He is, he is before all things. He is outside of all things. He existed before time began. He started, I mean, God is the source, right? And he is, I use the phrase, um, and it wasn't my original phrase. I got it from the apologetics class that I've taught. But uh, the phrase, he is the uncaused first cause. Like nothing caused God to exist. He always is. And that that's a, a mind-popping thought right there. Like how can God have always existed? How can, how can anything not have a beginning? That doesn't even make sense in my linear brain like that. And that's, that's actually, and I won't go off on this, but, um, and I didn't even mention this on Sunday, but that's like one of the reasons why, or the hardest things for the scientists to, to square with is that the universe had a beginning, right? Like the, to to say hard for them to square with, it's hard for them to come up with the ongoing gymnastics of correct crazy reasons so that they don't have to validate yes. that the Bible is any Because truth. if something has a beginning, apologetically, it has to have had a cause. And they don't want to accept the notion that the universe has a cause outside of itself, right? Because we would, we would have the same dilemma saying that God has no cause, right? Because it, it, it doesn't make sense in my brain that God just is, that he always existed, because that th- there's no place for that in my brain, right? Like that, there's no, there's nothing before God. He always existed and outside of time. So anyway, I- I'm rambling now on that, <laughs> and it's such a complex thought. But that's where we started on Sunday was that God is the creator, and with the word of His mouth, the, the Bible throughout affirms that God simply spoke the universe into existence, billions and two hundred billion trillion stars, and the complexity of life on Earth, all of it came from God's idea, his creativity, his infinite creativity, and his decision to speak, and and the the world came into existence. Hebrews says that the command of God, the world began. And so that's where we start again. Go to the website. I want to rehearse it all. We have so much that we want to uh, talk about today. Um, So just visit our website. uh, Go listen to the message. I think it'll be a blessing to you, and really, hopefully, build your foundation and your confidence in a God who not only is is all-powerful and and creative, but he can speak a word to release his creativity of power in your life today. So that's where we were. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Dan, before we jump in, and I think, you know, some of uh, 
what you took away is going kind of I think provided a nice little overarching context for for you know some of my questions and thoughts coming into it and some of the things that Scott wanted to touch on today. But um, listening to Sunday and even just kind of uh, as a part of our pastoral team here and and the preparation behind the series, what what um, what takeaways did you have as you know, looking at God as creator. Yeah. Well, you know, I am coming from it with a Christian worldview already, Mm. but also with a 21st century worldview of things that have already been, you know, uh, accepted as truth, right? So in the 16th century, people were arguing whether or not the earth moved. Mm -hmm. We don't, consider that question at all. I mean, there there's a Some. small fraction of people <clears throat> in Wilmel's door. <laughs> Come on, there's more. Wow. Yeah. I'm just hey, kidding. can I give you a phrase? Sure. So, and I'll, I'll, I don't want you to finish that, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. I was I was having a conversation uh, a year and a half ago <laughs> with a, a friend who's a physicist. And um, he actually has worked in Washington, D.C. He was a football dad, and we did football breakfast, and I was asking him questions. We were just talking, talking about faith and God, and and he used the phrase, he's like, well, that's not an open question anymore. Like he said, scientists are really just interested anymore in open questions. Anything yeah. that's been answered, they don't care about anymore. Like you're saying, like, sure. that's, an an- that's not an open question anymore. In most Correct. cases, does the earth move isn't an open question. It's a settled right. discussion for most yeah. people, right? So and, it's an open question. And I think <laughs> what's important that at the time of grappling with that question, the church was at the forefront mm-hmm. of managing that. Yeah. And, you know, if mm-hmm. you, any of our listeners really want to geek out on it, it's it's a history worth knowing and knowing accurately um, because the church has always very much been a proponent of science. Yeah. Uh, all of the great scientific breakthroughs have mostly happened from Christians. Mm-hmm. That's right. Even, you know, uh, from the priesthood or, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, there, there's never been an opposition to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yet you still have to grapple with certain questions, you know, because you could point to chapter and verse where it says, the Lord has set the earth and its foundations. Mm-hmm. That's right. Cannot be moved. Mm-hmm. All right. So then how can we believe the Bible, that scripture to be true in the Psalms, uh, and you know, and this this is like stemming from an uh, uh, an argument that I, I heard from a great, um, you know, apologetics voice and um, you know scholarly voice, John Lennox, mm-hmm. um, and and he's just been a great great uh, in, resource for me and in insights into stuff. But um, it, it is okay. There, we have to th- reason through these things, mm-hmm. right? So we have faith. All right. And then we have reason. We have science. We have religion. Um, And so my mind is that there because you're you're talking about some things that for some people, you know, when we're talking about God as creator, Mm -hmm. they don't necessarily. Yeah. They're not coming from that vantage point. Right. That's still an open question. That's still an open (laughs) question. Now, I think it's still an open question because the powers that be want it to be an open Mm -hmm. question. It's not that they don't know. Yeah what their findings show. Correct. It's a resistance to, we do not want to validate something right. that's going to yeah. bring any accountability to what we do with our yeah. personal in lives fa- and, and in our fact, soul. Again, you could people, we could direct people to our apologetics um, class online, but um, you know, many atheists will admit that the, the hardest and most difficult argument for them to respond to from the Christian perspective is the fine tuning of the universe. They call it a teleological argument. Mm. They even scientists admit that there it's hard to explain how perfectly fine tuned this universe is. Yeah. That it can exist at all and support life. They say that even the atheists they say reason must be silent here because it we cannot explain why why the universe is as it is. It's so perfectly yeah. tuned to exist and to support life. It's just yeah. a, that's I mean that's just a really cool thought. Yeah, that yeah. they they even admit that. Yeah, that it's hard to explain this. <laughs> totally. Yeah. You know, but again, from... You were talking about faith and reason. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's important f- for us as Christians to to understand that 
yes, faith is higher than reason, mm -hmm. but just because faith is higher than reason does not mean that it disagrees with it. Yeah. You know, and so... Or um, that we should put aside or ignore our, an effort to reason, right? Like right. To, to understand, to right. put in order, to set in order yep. things that can be understood. There's right. something to uh -huh. be said, you know, for the old mantra, the Bible says it, you know, I believe it and that settles it. That's There's something right. to be said for that. And yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I appreciate that level of simplicity. Yeah. But at the same time, that can't be a cop out right. for you loving the Lord our God with all of our minds. Yes. And so how do we do that? You know, mm -hmm. we're called, Jesus says we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Which he gave us. And the other so, thing I would say to, um, and I, I, I'll never forget this moment. And, you know, we all have moments where like, it just sticks in your brain, right? Like it's stored there. It's, this has got to be going back at least 15, 12 to 15 years ago. We were doing a, a like a, a Q and A session in the old sanctuary with Ron Hall, Doctor Ron Hall, and I was on the platform with him. We were doing like a a Wednesday night Q and A thing, and I remember using that exact phrase. Well, this, this is how I'd say it. this is what I'd and, I, and in my youthfulness, I said the Bible says it. I believe it. That settles it. And Ron Hall said, Doctor Ron Hall said, you know, Scott, he's like that. I I appreciate that. He's like, but I I want to just push back in that a little bit. He's like because that works for us. But that's not helpful that's for right. those who don't haven't yet arrived at believing the Bible. That's and right. I 100 percent agree with that. And I, yep. that's part of the apologetics approach is that we have to we have to find a way to penetrate the unbelief. Obviously, the Holy Spirit's involved, but like right. help dismantle some of the answerable questions that people have that stand as obstacles in their pathway to belief. Correct. Right. Yep. And if there are if there are questions that can be answer that help remove obstacles and, and that block people in the pathway to believe in Christ. And let's deal with that and address some of those things that can be answered. Yeah. Right. So Absolutely. I, I believe, I agree. I think they're held in balance, right? Let's tension and manage, yeah. right? Like the Bible says that I believe it, that settles it. I believe that, but I also believe there's a place for right. logic, reason, and science to help people deal with some of the things that can be answered and dealt with. Yeah. Yeah, so. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So those are just important things. Thinking yeah. about the, Framing the need this for yep. the need for balancing those things, mm -hmm. and then keeping faith in its proper place. You know. So here's one: if we could just launch here, unless Andrew, yeah. you had something. No, no. Because let's get into we're it. talking yeah. about God as creator, right? Yeah. So we believe at this church that that God is uncaused, right? That God has no beginning and no end. Why do we believe that? Not because I can prove it, but because the Bible says it, right? God is at, from everlasting, everlasting. He has no beginning and no end. God existed before the universe began. Then God decided at some point before time began that he would create the universe. He spoke it into being. Now, science tells us that the universe created itself or there's some kind of multiverse theory and there's a there's a billions of universes. Eventually, we'll get to one that looks like ours, blah, 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 right? Um, but the, the, the most common notion accepted in modern science is the idea of the Big Bang, right? The, and, and they say that because it seems like a, uh, a settled case that the universe is expanding, right? And that suggests strongly, in my mind, if the universe is expanding in every direction, we don't know the center point, but it's expanding in every direction, that if you if you wind the clock backwards, that suggests a reverse contraction that at some point, it had to be at a finite beginning, right? It's again, the hardest, the hardest point for right. science to answer, well, then what was before that? Like, what caused it to expand? What caused it to be? And the Big Bang Theory suggests that, again, they don't even call it an explosion. They call it an expansion, but it was a very rapid microsecond expansion in the beginning of time when it exploded into life and expanded outwards. So it's still expanding. Um, and I don't have a problem with the Big Bang Theory. Me neither. I don't. like. Mm -hmm. so, and again, I'm just saying that because a lot of Christians- I think I, it's supported in Scripture, actually. Right. Um, just in Genesis 1. And the Bible, right. well, even in Psalms, it says God stretched out the heavens, right? Yep. But mm -hmm. um, I, I, I want to say this because I think so many Christians, out of not having 
open their mind to just explore this conversation. They want to just shut it down because they think that negates God. Right. It's either you believe in God or the Big Bang. And I don't, that's, that's silly, number one. Yeah, like right. the Big Bang is simply a description of how the beginning might have come about. It doesn't at all say God didn't do it. It just describes what science suggests. Science is, is, is discovering and supporting. If the universe is expanding, then go backwards in time. It had to contract. It had to start somewhere. Why can't it be that God right. used that mechanism to erupt the universe into existence? And quite honestly, I think it makes even more sense when you say God spoke and the universe began, it exploded into life. God had a point where it began and now it's expanding yeah. eternally, right? Like that just lines up. So I, for the listener, like don't just rush to this conclusion that, well, it's either the Big Bang or God. No, like that. Mm -hmm. and it, they, they harmonize quite nicely. And actually. it was a Christian who first proposed right, the, the theory. Big, the idea of the a Big Belgian Bang. Belgian Catholic right. priest. And, mm -hmm. you know. So they are not at odds with each other. No. For If you're a believer and you say, no, I've always thought, no, they're not at odds. Like you can believe that God did it and the Big Bang is the way that we describe the the origin of the universe in its very beginning stages. Whether yeah. you believe that it happened ten thousand years ago or thirteen point eight billion years ago, the science it is a settled question that the universe is still expanding at an incredible rate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a mind boggling rate, and we don't even know what's beyond the known universe. Like, what's beyond the expansion point of that the, that sphere of the universe? We don't even know, but it's beyond what we can observe. So, yeah. Just, I love this stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. It's wild, but they're not at odds. They're not at odds. Yeah. You know? I mean, how, how much do you think, um, I mean, say modern Christians and, and modern people really struggle with this because they feel like, the two can't live together. I think it's common. I do because I think it's a misunderstanding of what what we believe, right? I yeah. think they just hear that, they hear the Big Bang and science and they think that assumes God doesn't exist. And I don't think it has to be that way. So anyway, that's my, yeah. my perception. Uh, but I do think it's common. I do think it's common. Or there could be people sitting in pews, you know, in churches that, hold to all of the scientific side of it and just their faith is just very reduced down to, mm -hmm. you know. And I've said this, I've argued this with atheists too, um, because I think their, their viewpoint requires faith as well. Mm -hmm. um, because what they believe, and this is, this is from a National Geographic article, which is not a biblical worldview, by the way. Um, an article that was printed a couple of years ago, they, the, the modern scientific view of the Big Bang is that all of the matter and all of the universe before it began to expand existed in a space the, a billionth the size of a proton. That's crazy. They, that's how they believe. That's what they – a National Geographic article said that before the universe expanded – it existed in a billionth the size of a proton. That means all of the matter and all of the energy in the entire universe, 200 billion trillion stars, somehow existed in that amount of space. That's a lot of density. And it's not even a comprehensible or feasible amount of pressure that could make that much, that many atoms and protons, neutrons all exist in that limited space. That doesn't make sense. You to believe that requires faith. Yeah. And I remember having a conversation in my office with a guy who came with he came with a folder of stuff he wanted to argue about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's always a oh curve. and I was like, okay, let's have a conversation. Let's sit down and and a, a, and a friend from church brought it. It was his dad and he brought him and we sat down and we started to talk about this and and I'm like and I said your I said to him your view requires faith as well. He's like, no, it doesn't. I'm like, okay, so explain this to me. And he was like, he had no response because the, the, it, it requires faith to believe that because it's, yeah. it's not a logical, scientifically accessible idea <laughs> yeah. to believe that all of the matter in the universe could exist in that limited amount of space. It makes no sense. Yeah. Um, so it requires faith anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, wh where do you guys want to jump off 
with well, this I think, because I mean the the whole faith versus reason and how I, I think mm-hmm. that's saying be um I think there's a few different directions that we mm-hmm. we'd start the conversation with and we we started the conversation for the listeners no uh before we even started recording and and started yes, having did. Yeah. some some interesting Which conversation we do every before weekend, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um it, but I think um another just another loop we could close maybe um in regards to that faith and science and while well, it's either or um because I think that there's an idea out there that people believe that it's either God or evolution Mm -hmm. and they lump some evolutionary ideas all together in one bucket. And I think some distinction is helpful. Um, So I do not hold to or believe the Bible makes room for what we would call macro evolution, Mm -hmm. um, where we believe that species can evolve into other species uh, and that, Ultimately, what that is suggesting is that the modern day mankind evolved from a single celled organism. And there are, I don't, I can't, I can't give you, I, I know I have it in my apologetic stuff, but like mathematical statisticians tell you that 13 billion years isn't nearly enough time to generate the complexity of life that we see on earth. It's mm-hmm. not even close. They, they say that you need orders of magnitude more time to create the genetic code that we know in humans today that produces meaningful life. And 13 billion years is not nearly enough time mm-hmm. to, to see us. And we don't, they, they think the earth is 4.5 billion years old. So it's not right. even 13 billion, it's right. 4 billion years. Yep. And they say that's not nearly enough time to create the diversity of life through evolutionary processes that known today, that not even close. Um, but so I don't hold to and believe the Bible supports macro evolution. I think the Bible is very clear. God created man. Right. And we do not evolve from a one cell according to its kind. Right. And each according to its kind. Right. So he created he created right. every creature according to its kind and they reproduce according to their kind. Right. They God equipped them to do that. Yeah. The Bible does not support macro evolution, but the Bible doesn't prohibit the the common notions. And I studied this in college uh, as a biology major of natural selection and micro evolution. Mm-hmm. Natural selection is simply the idea or theory that given t- over time, certain qualities or features in a species will be naturally selected out of the population because of the the survivability of those features. So let's say you take you take this is the simplest example you can give. You take you take two dogs and put them in Alaska. One has a thick hairy coat and one has a really thin coat. Well, obviously, the the dog with a thicker, hairy coat is going to have a better survivability rate in Alaska where it's cold. They will survive and thus they will propagate their genetic material onto ongoing generations where the dogs with a thinner hair coat will freeze to death and not survive to pass down their genetic material. Mm -hmm. That's natural selection, Hmm. right? So the, the dog with a thinner coat doesn't have a survivability and so will not pass on its genetic material. That dog was naturally selected out of its population, did not pass on its genetic material. And so the dog with the thicker coat had a better survivability rate and survived naturally selected to pass on its material. That happens. That's obvious. And I don't think we should argue against that. In the same way that microevolution suggests that um, my, micro, meaning small changes, can occur over time in species. Mm-hmm. But you don't get a new species. You just get the a, a small, minute changes over time will occur within a species. And that, I yeah. think, can be observed as well today. So, So how do you explain the guy – that has a natural sweater. <laughs> oh my word! Versus um, uh, the guy that's got to wear a heavy, uh, I think North Face jacket. I think you can <laughs> see that just in your own physical body, brother. Um, Mike, my, my, I, I am. This is a, sorry. I needed some. This comedy. is probably an overshare, but it's. I, I have very little hair on my arms. And I'm not a hairy person, right? <laughs> Neither are my boys. They have very little hair. That it's just natural genetic passing down of material, right? Like that's just I think over time those 
as you blend two humans and they they bring each of their 23 chromosomes together to make a, a new human like you you see the traits of families coming together and you just i think it's natural that a person with that because in pennsylvania you don't coat, you don't yeah. need i don't need that hairy coat yeah <laughs> i don't need it yeah so so it, scott one of the things that you nor do i have a lot of facial hair that you um mentioned and i think i think it it's a, a tough thing for people to get around. And mm -hmm. you mentioned it on Sunday as well was the age of the earth <clears throat> and how old is the earth. Yeah. And um, they, it, it surprised me when I first learned this, but the idea of a young earth, you know, under 10,000 years old is a fairly new concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it was, you know, early 1900s, mid, mid 20th century, some, somewhere around there where, where the idea of mm. the earth being less than 10,000 years old kind of came, came right. about. But right. before that, it was like, that was never taught or thought. Yeah. Um, but now it's it it I feel like it's worked its way into mm -hmm. the church almost as a to me when I look at it, it's like an overreaction to like a full rejection of science. I and where science is is mm -hmm. setting a number mm -hmm. to try and explain yes. a length of time. But yeah. This yeah, this is a um a very complex and massive topic. This is not a simple no. thing at all. And and many got this in a forty five. So let's talk. solve it many, in the next. Let's 10 solve minutes. it right. Yeah. Many right. men and women go on have Amazon, or maybe we can get Beth to sell us in the bookstore. Seven days that divide the world: the beginning, according to Genesis and Science, by Dr. John C. Lennox. I Zondervan. Yeah, I presented in the apologetics class. I presented, and there are more. I presented ten different ways people understand the seven days of creation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no, there, there's no simple answer to that, but as far as like the young earth, old earth, that's a, is the universe or the earth young and a new idea. There are, uh, I think there's two lanes that you should discuss or could discuss there. One, what does the Bible lead us to? What conclusions, if you only had the scripture, what conclusion would you draw? That's where people start mm -hmm. in the modern movement of a young earth. People begin with, well, let's just, if we didn't know science at all, what, what conclusion would we draw based on what the scripture says? And they use what they'd call reverse dating of the genealogies, and they work mm -hmm. backwards from what we know Jesus 2,000 years ago, and they say, well, if we had 40 generations or X number of generations, and they're each 40 years, let's reverse date back to Adam, because the Bible does give us, if they're complete genealogies, it gives us the number of generations, and so they can reverse if. date that back, right, if it's complete, yeah. right, back to six to 10,000 years old. And that's then there, there's a lot of assumptions that have to be made yeah. because then you have to say, well, was there any, how much time existed before God made Adam? Was it a, sh were, were they seven literal days? And if they were literal days, then how much time existed in Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2, where the earth was formless and void? Exactly. Gap yeah. theory, right? So I believe the days are literal days uh, because the the day, the Hebrew day, Yom, suggests that. It's not used in many other ways throughout the Old Testament. And each day says sun up, there was morning, there was night, the first day. So it seems like those were literal days. Now, many people embrace, well, the day is like a thousand years and they could be eons, epochs, like sure. a lot of those well, are reasonable. Mm -hmm. They don't, so the writer of, he, uh, of Genesis, which is, we believe to be Moses, who would have been getting this revelation from God in the middle bronze era. Oh yeah. Thousands of years later. Yeah. There's no way he could have known with such accuracy except by revelation. Yes. Of God. By mm -hmm. God. So now this is already God's however many Right. Thousands, billions of years, whatever you want to think about. Um, so that right there, thinking about that and and who the first recipients of this were. People yeah. growing up in Egypt that Correct. had all kinds of theories as well about how things came into being. Uh, all their different <laughs> yeah. mythologies and different and things their gods, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they would have had, had some um, awareness and... and understanding of those theories uh he doesn't use a different word for earth mm -hmm. in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth well we we would interpret that or think that 
earth to be the entirety of the world, right? Of this planet. This planet. That's how I would see it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. But then earth, that same word is used again to describe the distinction between dry ground and water. And yeah. water. Right. So there's no different word used there, but it's yeah. understood mm -hmm. a different way. Yeah. So I I propose that you can have that. Mm -hmm. You can Oh, yam be Right, okay. exactly. That mm -hmm. it's and it's not taking away from mm -hmm. its truthfulness and accuracy, mm -hmm. but that that it can still be understood differently. Mm -hmm. Um you know, just like in the same I don't know. It's that's one of the difficult things in reading the scripture that you know, when you, if you're just taught a certain way, like, yeah. oh, we want just the plain reading of scripture. Yes. Well, sorry, that doesn't actually always no. work. Yeah. Well, in, if you, in answering these questions, yeah. it works in the sense of the Holy Spirit is going to be at yeah. work mm -hmm. revealing truth to you yeah. on the things that matter yeah. most for you in the moment. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get into these, yeah, these debate topics and yeah. you know all that it, it, just like what Dr. Ron Hall you said to you be, sorry yes you have to be prepared you, to entertain a lot of possibilities yes yes you cannot just say there's only one way to understand this text because i mean i think there's there there's reasonable evidence on both sides of the conversation right like cuz so I started with like, what would, what conclusion would you draw if you just looked at the scripture? But that leads them to say, well, is there evidence around us? Mm -hmm. Does the universe have any evidence for a young existence? And there are, there is some, there are some things out there. If you look at, there's a website called Answers in Genesis that, that they are, they are proponents of a young creation, young earth. And they, they present a lot of evidence that could be compelling, right? Like that they think that they sh show like, for example, they, it was expected that when we, if you believe we land on the moon, that's another conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Putting it out there. No, you don't. For real? Okay. We're not going there. No, we won't go there. Uh, <laughs> but they, they expected- That might be the next podcast. They expected, yes. <laughs> based on the age of the universe, that they would have a massive amount of lunar dust collected. When they got there, they found only four inches of lunar dust. And that would that, that would suggest that the, the moon and the earth wasn't nearly as old as what was expected when they would visit the moon. Okay. Um, so God created light and darkness in verse 3, uh -huh. and that was the first day. But he didn't create the sun and moon until the fourth day. Mm -hmm. He is light. He himself gives light. So God created himself. After Didn't he, he separate the lights on day three? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. Mm -hmm. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. But then verse 14, God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as the signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. Mm -hmm. And it was so. Mm -hmm. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day, the lesser light to govern the night. Mm -hmm. The sun and the moon, right. Yeah. Yeah. But those aren't the only... Well, the moon isn't a source of light. It's a reflection of light. But it's they're, they're not the right, only Right, which ones. we understand now yes. as a... 21st century understanding of, of right. how correct, the but I'm moon saying there are billions of stars in the universe, yes. right? That yeah, and we're well, also so light. Agreed. Um, and again, he also made the stars middle bronze age, yeah, right. right, with an audience of people that were well acquainted with the Egyptians' theories on how things came mm, into being, yeah, and so how things are presented. He's not writing a scientific treatise yeah. here. He's not writing. Yeah, which is, yes. I think for me, that's my biggest, biggest issue with the answers in Genesis yeah. group. Mm -hmm. Not, not with the the young Earth theory mm -hmm. per se, but them in particular is they approach Genesis one and two in a one hundred percent literal yeah. historical recounting of the creation right. of earth but there are things in there that like blow up in in that they impose a 21st century mindset onto it yeah well mm -hmm. and you use the word literal 
which John Lennox proposes that that's such a slippery word to use mm -hmm. and, and, and how it gets used, because especially in the way that the Bible will use things, because the Bible supposes that we understand stuff in the natural world. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I am the door. Well, we know that Jesus isn't actually right. a door, mm -hmm. but because we know what a door is, mm -hmm. we know what the experience of going through a doorway is. So if Jesus describes himself as being the door, we can understand, okay, then that means he's the only way through which we can enter into an experience with God and all of his reality and all of that. He, it's the entry point. He's the doorway. He's the access point to something new that we've never. So we only understand that mm -hmm. through knowing what a physical door is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Bible will often use yeah. mm -hmm. these things, you know, and, and yet, so the way that C.S. Lewis put it is that even though Jesus isn't literally a door, he's speaking of a door and its literal experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's like, yeah. it, it can become a tricky term. So like, do I believe that Genesis is literal? Yes, but just not in the same way that yeah, other people We would define it as do. literal, yeah. Yeah, you know? and, and we're, <laughs> we're taking our experiences and our human language. And so again, it, as we believe Moses wrote Genesis, you know, and it's being revealed through him much in the same way that John wrote Revelation and is trying to take what he has seen and what is being presented to him and put it in words and descriptions mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah, it's interesting. the The beginning and end of the Bible, it's it's these revelations that that you know, and an indiv individual is being yes. being yep. revealed to them, yeah. and they're trying to communicate it. And it there's so many questions around mm -hmm. both both so ends of the Bible. Those books, yeah, yeah. right. And the, you know, Genesis one two. This I, I started listening to this podcast called the Bema Podcast. Um, it's uh, it's a Hebrew. Christian scholar, and he explains the Old Testament because it's written to the Hebrews with a Hebrew perspective and point of view in mind, right? Like how they would have understood it. And Genesis 1 is a ginormous poetic chiasm. Mm -hmm. It's this reversible poem that was meant to be more poetic and artistic in the way that it describes the, how God created, but not necessarily ever meant to be a scientific mm -hmm. statement, right? So it, it just gives a different perspective on that. So here's it, but let me throw it, let me just respond mm -hmm. to your one question about like, in, in Revelation 21, it says that the glory of God will be the light. So is it possible that before God made the sun and the moon, God permitted his glory to bring light onto the universe? Without a star called the sun, well, right? Because yeah. in Genesis in, in Revelation twenty one it says the glory of God will be their light. Mm -hmm. We won't need a sun anymore because God's glory he will the light of the provide world. the light of the world. There's no yeah. more night in eternity, right? And yeah. God will give it. His glory will be the physical light. Well, and how is we how see. is Jesus's <laughs> image described in Revelations as as light shining from his Right face, mm -hmm. it, which, yeah, I mean, I'm not arguing that. I'm just yeah. trying. Like, I think, I That's think, really, what, the I think, really, what, thing, yeah. yeah, what, what, anybody who's listening to, yeah. to the last we've just forty minutes of rambling, now, yeah, <laughs> can, can understand is that, yeah, you know, ultimately, w science mm -hmm. cannot prove origin of life. That's what it comes. Mm -hmm. in. Science has zero explanation or. That they can prove they theories, lots they, of theories, lots of theories, but nothing concrete that has ever proved origin of life. <laughs> no. However, the Christian worldview is the origin of life comes from a a creator who lives outside of time and manner mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. brought everything mm -hmm. together, yes. and all things underneath the stars start with with him. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, yeah. like there's there's a thousand different theories yeah. and ways to interpret. Like there's three of us in this room, and we all have different interpretations. Yeah, I right. think of Genesis one. It would be helpful, I think, just for those listening to address the old Earth because we yeah. talked about young Earth a little bit, and we've given nothing conclusive. I, I I'm aware of that if you're listening. Um, but I think there's equally reason to arrive at 
a belief or a perspective of an old universe yeah. to accept the the observations of modern science, which is where I lean, mm -hmm. right? That the universe is expanding, that the the fact, just the very fact alone that we can see the light from distant stars suggests that the universe is old. You have to believe that either the, the that God created the universe with apparent age or that the star somehow as they leave us and travel away from us, the light was already here, right? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, the very fact that we can see the light from a star that's, let's say, 2.4 billion light years away, it literally means it took that light 2.4 billion years to get to our telescopes because light travels at 5.6 billion miles, whatever, trillion miles per yeah. second, right? Yeah. So for a light year, it has to, I mean, a light year is 5.6 trillion miles. So for that light to get here, the universe had to exist long enough for the light to, to traverse from point A to point B. So I tend to lean towards and accept the observation as a modern science mm -hmm. that the universe is very old, not very young. Yeah. But- And I, I think there's yeah. there are things with- with modern science that that provide answers that don't just because biblical interpretation mm -hmm. is it can be one thing that doesn't mean that it's disproving the Bible. It's just no. it's no. it's God is like a down to our very you know molecular structure, mm -hmm. like very detailed and oriented and very. and designed things perfectly. That when humans are are looking into things and and discovering answers. It's not discovering a disproof mm -hmm. of God. It's discovering yeah. the excellence and and oh, just word. nature of the God, infinite creativity you know? of God. And I think yeah. for Christians, we shouldn't be scared of what science no. is saying. Discover. No. We need to be well educated in how to have conversations. And if you're not educated mm -hmm. in in the topic, don't. <laughs> proceed with the conversation that's good advice grow grow in your own understanding mm -hmm. of, of these things but um yeah, yeah i i think it's just it, it's in i think the biggest thing for me and i mean we need to wrap up so i guess we'll we'll go to sure. final thoughts for me mm -hmm. my final thought is no one got into heaven based on their belief of how old the earth is mm -hmm. no you know no. that's not what yeah. matters and it should not and, be a hill we die and, on yeah no. As no, Christians, ever. we shouldn't we shouldn't get so involved in 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 these little details and miss mm -hmm. the the point of it all. Yeah, no. the point of it all being that God sent His Son Jesus, who was a man who died on a cross, right. and that history holds that right. Like, if you get caught up in these conversations with people and get lost in the the debate. It's always helpful to be remind ourselves and and people we talk to that we still have to deal with Jesus and his resurrection, right? Like the the evidence for the resurrection and all those things, that's where apologetics goes, right? Like is overwhelming. And we have to answer that question for ourselves. Right. right? Which are still things that don't like so yes, there is the natural world. Uh -huh. We don't deny that. We're all sitting here talking, Correct. using yep. our, our brains to to think and to converse and all of that. Are we? Or um, is this a simulation? Yeah, I don't know. It could be a simulation. <laughs> the matrix. It's the matrix. <laughs> or do we even um, have free choice to you know, form our thoughts? Red pill or green blue. pill? Oh, blue pill. That's you what You know where that road goes. So. Oh, man. Anyway, that – but we also – the Bible – reveals to us and even <laughs> before any of that's recorded there's the supernatural mm -hmm. well the supernatural and the natural are not opposed to one another mm -hmm. you know they just operate at different levels but we see that coming in different together. dimensions yeah mm -hmm. right so at, well, also in the same dimension too we see that in we see uh we've talked in other podcasts you know there's demonic stuff mm -hmm. that that happens in the natural yeah. world mm -hmm. there's also you know, there's godly things that happen, mm -hmm. you know, the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, miracles that take right, place, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. all, all of that. And so we can't separate those things. Like, so yes, there's, and there's order though, to mm -hmm. the natural world and God designed it that way. So in his, you know, being supernatural instituted everything in its natural order. And we have to, again, like you said, Andrew, that just is more cause to for us to feel small mm -hmm. <laughs> and know yeah. just how great and grand our God is. Mm -hmm. And that of the earliest 
Christian creeds, the very first argument that they make, and it's some somewhere probably in the 300s AD, the Apostles' Creed. You know, there's, I think, some... Um, you know, debate as to where in the 300s, but somewhere in there where they first come up with their first statement. And you might be familiar with it, you know, depending on what, um, you know, your background wasn't growing up. Uh, it says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, mm-hmm. creator okay. of heaven and earth. Uh-huh. This is the first thing. Yep. All right. Creed, yep. Our very first point of doctrinal statement of faith. <laughs> we got to start there. That's where we started week one. Right. And this is where we started here, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. And, and so they, they were having this argument, and, 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 but back then, their understanding of the natural world mm-hmm. was much different than what ours is, yet yeah. they still arrive at the same conclusion uh-huh. based upon how God reveals himself in Scripture, but also how he revealed himself in the way that John says it, in the beginning was the Word. The Word mm-hmm. was with God. The Word was yeah. God. And and then by him, all things were made. And then it says, the Word became flesh yeah. and made his dwelling. Yeah. Well, he came to that which he created. You know? Yep. Mm-hmm. The, the, he came to the world he created, but that, that world rejected him. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Which is the story of the gospel, oh, which is yeah. crazy. And uh, because in his... This is what can make us stand in awe of God. And just as I was listening to you guys talk and, you know, that... Obviously, God's infinite wisdom, you know, and just stuff that is beyond our comprehension. I've been teaching my kids this one truth to say that we could never, we can't fully know God. Mm -hmm. We can't know him fully, but we can know him accurately, Mm -hmm. you know, and just drilling Mm -hmm. that that Mm -hmm. thought into their heads. We can't know him fully. He's inexhaustible. You were presenting that on Sunday. Inexhaustible. Yeah. We could never, and, and and if you think that you have, then then he's not God. You're not you're not encountering no, God. Right. You're, Our yeah. mind, We are the created. Uh-huh. He's the creator. So we could never exhaust mm-hmm. his wisdom, his ways, yeah. uh, even in explaining him. He our even words, says, "My ways are higher." So we, yeah, he I'll, is telling us there are things that we will never understand. Our words are always going to even mm-hmm. fall short in yeah. being able to describe. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know his mm-hmm. attributes. Yep. However, he makes him himself known. Yes. He's makes himself personable. Accessible, he makes yeah. himself accessible. Mm. He he moves into the neighborhood. Oh. He desires to have relationship. Yeah. He takes uh the, the punishment that we deserved upon himself. I mean, if this doesn't make you love Jesus more, I don't know. Are you quoting Eugene Peterson there? No. In the neighborhood. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yes. I think so, yeah. 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 Yes, that's that's his that is, rendering yeah, of the message, you know, yeah. may you rest in peace. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yep. <laughs> um, yeah. And so uh, it's just it's amazing to me just sitting and 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 so I know that we got into a lot of, you know, heady things yeah. or stuff that can make you feel like what on earth do I even believe? Why do uh, I listen this yeah, long? <laughs> why do, but no, like man, this for mm-hmm. me, and and I hope for others that this just causes you to just be so much more in awe of who, of who yeah. God is, mm-hmm. and that just by simply praying and asking Him, you know, to to show Himself to you, yeah, or that that He gives us the Holy Spirit that mm-hmm. we can feel His presence, that we can yeah. we can know Him mm-hmm. personally, yeah, that is amazing, yeah. Like there, there's, Amazing, yeah. there's, there's no other words I could say for that. Like, yeah. you know, that we can sit here and talk for, and, and we can't oh, even Lord. scratch the surface. Like we're, oh no, we're, we're, we are not we're scholars amateurs. on this. We are <laughs> av, av, novices, you know, and we are so novices on this. Totally. Topic, yeah. mm-hmm. And there's so much to be explored out I'm, there, I'll but still I'm like, a novice, yeah. wow. On these topics. Um, he, he's, he's amazing. Yeah. And, God. uh, but we got to know what we believe. Mm-hmm why we believe it. And, um, yeah, I believe in God, the father almighty creator. I'm glad to hear that. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Yeah. Just in case that was, uh, um, Scott, any, anything, I I have a closing statement. Yeah. Yeah. I have a closing statement. Yeah, I do. Um, because you guys both made a comment about how it reminds us how small we are and that's 100% true. Like in the grand scope of the universe, we are, minuscule were incomprehensibly uh finite um but i would also add this that mankind was god's final creation is is the phrase magnum opus like mm-hmm. this is the yep. we are the ultimate 
of his creations. Like there's nothing more spectacular, beautiful, magnificent in the created order than mankind. We are the mm -hmm. we are the pinnacle of God's creative genius because we are the the blending of physical and immaterial. Like we are the the blending of the immaterial soul, spirit, and physical beings mm -hmm. in one. We were made in God's image. Like so as as inconsequential my existence is in this the massive scope of the universe, I'm also the most we are the most infinitely creative thing that God created. We are and again, we would we would not have time today to to go into this, but like when you learn about the systems of the body and study biology, your mind is blown more so than when you think about the scope of stars and astronomy. Like the human body is to me the most dazzlingly complex system of systems that exists in the world. The human body is, and I've been doing a lot of listening because of our daughter's uh, battle with, with colitis and all that. And just listening to human biologists talk about the systems of the body, it is unbelievable. Mm. Like every single one of your cells has four, your, your, your DNA, your genetic material has 4.5 billion base pairs in one cell. Base pairs in your genetic material. Every cell, 40 trillion cells in your body, and every one of them has three and a half feet of DNA with 4.5 billion base pairs. It's information. Your body is coded mm -hmm. with, with unbelievable amounts of information. They, they say that if you could stretch out the, and I've said this before, the, the genetic material in your body, the, the, the double coiled helix structure of your DNA in every cell, if you could uncoil it, you have enough material in your body to stretch from this, the earth to the sun and back 32 times in one human body. Wow. That's how much information is coded in your body to go from here to the sun and back 32 times mm. in your human body. You and I are, we are insignificant in the cosmos, yet you are the most creative thing God ever made. That is unbelievable to me. So uh, there's my closing statement. Yeah. Just thinking about the song, <laughs> So Will I. I love it. Oh, man. Yeah. The stars were made to work. Yes. So will I. It's just unreal. We are, we are sing, unbelievable so creations. Yeah. So. Man, so good. Great stuff today, guys. Thank you. Love um, it. I mean, maybe not great stuff. I've, I, it's such a, it just from good. a, it was, good it was very, it, it, I, parts of it to me kind of, and, you know, I was, mm -hmm you know, half paying attention, trying to pull up other stuff as well to see where <laughs> yeah. we're going. But Doing like some research there's just on the fly. so much, there's just so much, especially in this topic yeah. that it's, it's hard to, to squeeze it into, oh, my word. you know, yeah. a, a short conversation, which is where the, maybe not, but like, it's certainly yeah, a conversation I, I enjoyed. Yeah. And I, th I would encourage any of our listeners to like, dive deep yeah, dive deep it, own, like you you study, won't be yeah. disappointed if you spend time you know yeah studying mm -hmm. studying god's word studying um from a you know world view to biblical view yeah. on origin mm -hmm. of life um yeah i definitely encourage it uh mm -hmm. if you miss sunday's message you can always go back and catch up and watch it on our website at gtchurch.online or you can watch our services on YouTube or listen to the sermons in podcast form wherever podcasts are available. If you did enjoy today's conversation or any of the conversations we have on the podcast, make sure you share it with those um, around you in your life group, serve teams, your family, your friends. And like I said last week, if you didn't enjoy it, share it with your enemies. Um, Scott, <laughs> uh, do you want to promo what we have coming up this yes, week? For, I'd love to. Um, for so this God week uh, in God is week two, we're going to, again, we're examining some of the most fundamental, fundamental uh, attributes of God's nature. And we're going to explore three words this Sunday that I think are common in the Christian world. But if you're new to the faith, these may be new words, right? We're going to look at the, the elements of God's nature that he is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Omni meaning all. He's all powerful, all knowing, and everywhere present. So we're going to explore what the Bible says about those topics on Sunday. 
Well, I look forward to diving deeper well, into that right and learning on that. <laughs> oh, you all right? <laughs> well, on that note, yes. until next then. time, oh, I hope Jim that Cameron. today's conversation has had an impact on your life as we all continue to grow together in Christ. Take care and God bless. <laughs> Bye.